is the department of mathematics we will ask you some questions okay okay so here is the board sometimes it's equal to 1 minus 1 by 12 and so whenever this sum is goes to this minus 1 by 2 how is it possible Normally divergent in course, you can probably see because the one minus one. But this is sine function. Uh, it's like the sine like, function. Like sine function, right. So, sine function would look something like, I suppose, this. Yes, yes, yes. So, just approximately close to the this. Part, right? So, minus 1 is this one. Yes. Yeah. So, the limit of the sine function is going to be equal to sine function. What is, what do you think? Uh, when the US is. Yes, yes. Uh, why because sine is sine x uh, is less than minus one to plus one. Yeah. So whenever x is less than to infinity, so so how can go between minus? Oh, this yes. Okay. Yes. So what? Always going constantly between these values. Well, pi over four. Uh, But 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 whenever as in but if you see x tends to infinity, so if you see x tends to zero, then then one. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. So that means. x is less than 1 right to 0 that means uh, that means sin x is less than x but that is that is true. but that doesn't really make for good or bad of course x itself you can make this statement if x is a negative 1 then we could say well by the squeeze theorem sin of x has to be minus 1 if x tends to minus 1 and sin x will be range it because if we take the infinite day, that because in, in for, for any real x sin x is less than x right so if we take x tends to infinity so sin x sin is less than infinity x tends to infinity that is limit x tends to infinity is not equal to infinity yes of course of course but does not exist doesn't necessarily mean infinity like for example uh, oh no that's a bad example but for example if you have say i think this one is called the hardy step function or the floor function Right. Which, which function? Four function. Yes. So the four of x looks like this. So this is zero. This is one. Yes. This is one. This yes. is the, the, the step function. Yes. So if you go from this side, then it's one. If you go from this side, yes, it, it's zero. If you go from this side, it's one. Yes. So it could be anywhere between them, right? It's not like you can just say man zero point five, right? So 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 what? I can't understand why is this what? I mean it, the limit of uh, the function as x approaches 1 could be anywhere between 0 and 1, right? Yes, 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 yes. So, the same way, the limit of sine of x could be anywhere between minus 1 and 1. No. And we can't decide on an exact value. 
Yes, of course yes. We have an upper variant and a lower variant. Yes, variable, definitely. But those don't come close enough to actually give up. So that's what does not exist. Yes. Okay. So, in a similar way, we could do that. But we can explain the definition of summation to be no longer just me working with us converted here. So, for example, you could say that 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1, et cetera, equals 0, for reason that I think I told you. So, if, it, so, so, so if it is even, even, so that's equal to 0. Yes, you could say that it's equal so, to 0. So, if you take the, uh, the, the even times. Yes. So, odd times is equal to uh, 1. Well, we don't, yeah, we don't really know. Uh, so that's why the divergence series. Yes. Yeah. Is infinity even or odd? I mean, it's not really a defined question because you can't really define what infinity is in the first place. To call it even or odd would imply that if you added one, you get an odd number. Yes. So how would you add one or do operations on something that's supposed to be the biggest number? Yes. So this would be equal to zero, of course. You can choose yes, yes, zero. Yes. But we can expand the definition of summation. So essentially, we can make the general sum. So, with the mean of the partial sum. What is this? The mean of the partial sums is like. What is this? Partial. So, like, uh, if you're summing a uh, one, two, three, etc. Yes. You would get one. One plus two is three. Or one, yes. three plus three is six. Ten, etc. No, two plus equal to five. Oh, what? One plus two equal to three. No, one plus two is three. 3 plus 3 is oh, 6. Oh, it's 6, right. Yeah. So this is the partial sum function. Yes. Right. So then, uh, if you taught and tested it out on 1 minus 1 plus 1, it gives you this thing that we looked at earlier. 1, 0, 1, 0. But then, we're going to take the sum over time. So the sum of all those partial sums to get the mean. So the first partial sum is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So hmm. we take this in a separate then we take the partial sums of this to get one, one at first, one plus zero is one, one plus one, one is two, 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 two zero. Yes, of course, you get three. Three, yes, 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 yes. So yes. then once you take the mean, that means you're dividing by the number of terms in the sequence. So so what are you what are you doing? So we're taking the mean of the partial sum. So you would agree that the mean is a one plus a two plus dot 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 plus a n. So what is the mean? Uh, well, we're seeing if the mean of these approaches something over time, and we get one, one half, two thirds, yes. one half, three fifths, one half, and you can see these differences with mm -hmm. one half are progressively becoming smaller and smaller. This becomes four sevenths, then a half, then five ninths, then a half, and eventually the difference becomes smaller and smaller. Yes, yes, and yes, smaller. that I understood. So you can say that the limit is one half, and of course. This works like normal if you have an actually converted series, like say, ooh, uh, the basic problem or the inverse squares. So this works normally, right? So, and that's that problem solved. Then we're going to solve this problem next, which was originally solved by Euler. 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4, etc. Now, apparently, this is equal to 1 fourth. Yes. Now, how is that possible? Well, it all comes down to the expansion of 1 over 1 plus x squared on a Taylor series. Yes. So, to take the Taylor series of this, center it at 0, we're going to get f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x plus f sylvia prime. There is the Taylor series expansion. Yes, yes. Right? So we can just use the power rule to say this is minus 2 to the 1 plus x. Yes. And then this is minus 3. Yes. But then we take the derivative of that, get 6 plus 1 to the x to the minus 4. Oh, yes, it, it will continue. Yes. And you can see probably that this is an alternating factorial. So this is 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 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 factorial 4 factorial. Yes. So equ equating that type of this. Yeah. Yes. So what can we say in general for Fn at zero? Well, 
well is equal to well, uh, Fn of x. Now, this is not an exponent, by the way. This is, this is Fn x equal to uh, uh, that is. Uh, yeah, so we want d d x n f of x. Right. right. So that's equal to, let's see. So the first one is 1, 1 over x. So this could be. Minus written, 2. So this is 1 factorial. So for n equals 1. And then we have 1 plus x to the minus 2. So I'm going to let that be equal to minus 1 plus uh, n. And then this is just going to be n. So both of these are increasing by 1 each time. So this is number 1, number 2, number 3, yes, number yes, 4, yeah. so on and so forth. You can probably see the pattern. But when I plug in 0, because that's what this is centered around. Yeah, that I understood. Yes. So you get n, and this goes to 1 no matter what. Yes, yes. Ah, but now you see this is going to be 1 factorial. Uh, Two factorial x, so yes. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, right, that's right. This is going to be a sorry. So if we want to do n, we have to add a, this little chunk to everything. This doesn't matter, but we also have to add to it. So this is just n plus one factorial. So now let's figure that out. So I'm gonna shuffle a little bit. Uh, so I will see in the in the literatures. Okay, so leave it. Right. Okay. So the result of this is that when we plug in, oh, when you plug in x equals one to this, you get one over one plus one squared, so one minus two plus three. Yes, yes, yes. Four, yeah. Because you can see. So that's why it is. Yeah, it's a factorial. So the factorial is minus one, or minus two, I think. So then. That follows naturally. Yes, yes, definitely. So. All right. So then this makes one over four. So now the, on the new John dimension, we need to write easily, easily. Three plus four dot dot dot. Equal to minus one by twelve. Yes. Let's say it's x. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that kind of needs an integer here, so let's call it x. X. That is the two x double. You can right. take it to a two into x. Well, we could do that, or what we're going to do. We're going to subtract minus 4, minus 8 from these terms, etc., and there's going to be a minus 12 here, as you could expect. So this is going to be minus 3x, well, I mean 4x, right? You can see that. This is minus 4, minus 8. Minus yes, 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 yes. So that means that 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 dot 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 equals minus 3x. Yes. So I thought this was equal to 1 fourth. And then yes, it's a minus 1 by 12. But of course, very nice. Yes. Very nice. Very the, nice. The yes. math police will put you in uh, math field for 40 years. Yes. If you try to do algebra with such cycles. Very nice. Very nice. Sure. Very nice. You take a. You sit here. So, lots of discussions have been. Yes. Very interesting. Very interesting.